Watch this. Inside BlueKit, I can create a math question that requires students to actually type the solution instead of guessing from multiple choices. And with one click, I can enter the equation editor to create complex latex equations without ever leaving BlueKit. A lot of math teachers only use BlueKit for quick multiple choice review games. Those are fun, but they don't always measure real mastery and they definitely don't take advantage of everything BlueKit can do. If you're one of those teachers, awesome. Welcome to the video. I'm excited to show you how to unlock BlueKit's hidden math power tools. You'll learn how to create deeper, more interactive question sets, how to structure them for your lessons, and even how to use them offline for practice and assessments. Let's start with creating question sets. Of course, you can always make multiple choice quizzes, and these are great for introducing topics, reviewing math facts, and even more. But BlueKit has more options that make your sets much more engaging for math specifically. Tip number one is to use typing answer questions. You can either go and edit an existing set and open up a question to edit it, or create one from scratch and click the add question button. Now, up at the top, you can switch the question type from multiple choice to typing. This requires students to type in the answer. You can choose whether their answer must match exactly or it can contain certain values. This type of question works really well for math problems where there isn't a neat multiple choice option and students need to show mastery of the process, not just guess. This allows you to display an equation and ask a question like solve for X, which leads me to my next tip. Tip number two is to use the equation editor that's built directly into BlueKit for all users. In the question editor, click on the equation button to insert math symbols and complex equations. You can either compose them using the different tools on screen, you can type them out, or you can even write out equations clearly for algebra, geometry, or advanced math topics using latex formatting. That means you can copy and paste formulas directly from other resources or a composer of your choice, making it quick and easy to bring clean and correct math notation into your question sets. Once the equation is composed, and inserted, it's treated like media, so you can still write instructions in text or add context alongside it. And it also allows you to include special symbols that aren't normally supported in plain text. Tip number three is to add images. I already mentioned the equations, but visuals are another powerful tool, especially for your younger learners or advanced math charts, graphs, and visuals. You can use BlueKid's built-in image gallery or upload your own. Many users even source their own or create custom graphics in free tools like Canva Education or Figma for Education. Maybe you want to create a base 10 image or display geometric shapes or graphs. Simply find or create these images and add them to the question. And if you're a BlueKit Plus user, you can take it even a step further by adding images or equations as actual answer options in multiple choice sets. Tip number four is if your images are not enough, you can always pair your sets with external tools, physical things in the real world. Many teachers have found success by combining BlueKit with scratch work, manipulatives, or reference sheets. Don't be afraid to give your students a paper or a whiteboard alongside their device. That way, you're not just clicking answers, they're actually practicing in the same way that they would during a test, working step by step. Plus, you can collect and compare their scratch work to the post-game report to notice patterns, or trends, or just gain a little bit more insight into how they came to the conclusion that they did. And pro tip, if you go this route, when you host a game, most of the new and updated games will have the option in the host settings to change the question ordering from random to ordered. This means that the questions in game will be presented in the same order for all students, following the same order that they appear in the question set, making it much easier to compare scratch work to the post game report. Now, all the tips up to this point have been about enhancing games or question sets, but let's talk about the lesson flow and how you can actually incorporate BlueKit into your math class. I like to think of it in stages. First, you can use a multiple choice game after introducing a new concept to reinforce and to get your students more familiar with the types of problems and questions that they're seeing. Maybe use a fast paced game with high question frequency like Gold Quest, Deceptive Dinos, or even a team game mode like Blue Rush. Then you can create a variation of the set or simply duplicate your original set if you're a BlueKit Plus user and change the answer type to typing answer like we talked about earlier. This adds even more challenge and requires deeper thinking versus just simply selecting between two to four choices. For a game like this, you could play Crypto Hack, Tower Defense 2, or Cafe. There are even more new game modes for BlueKit Plus users like Coco Cabana and Stargrazer that your students will love. Now, when it's time for an assessment, you've got a few options. You can choose to host a live game and maybe change the setting to have those ordered questions to ensure everyone's seeing the same ones. But if you want to assess mastery without the pressure of competition, 
you can assign homework and have students complete it independently. And this doesn't have to be done at home, despite its name. You can have students complete homework in class. To do this, find a set and click Assign. Update the details like the question goal and the due date, which is less important if you're doing it in class, and then share the link or QR code for them to scan on their own devices. Students can now choose which game mode they want to play to complete the assignment, or you can now limit the options by choosing specific game modes that you want to let them play with. For a straightforward assessment, many teachers like to limit the selection to just study mode, which presents questions in a simple flashcard style format. But for other assessments, it's fun to leave the choice up to the students. As they play through their game, answering questions in the set, you can view the results in the homework tab in real time to track progress and completions. And of course, you could use this same homework flow to assign actual take home homework. And don't forget about offline use. Did you know you can print any question set as a worksheet? For public question sets, just click on the three dots and click on print worksheet. For your own sets, hover over the gear icon and click print. A preview screen will open in a new tab where you can customize the title, add instructions, and choose whether to show images. And of course you can print. After printing the worksheets, you can toggle this option on right here to show answers, to print a separate answer key for yourself to make grading easier. This is perfect for a screen-free quiz in class, take-home practice, or even test prep. One of the most important parts of any of these options is actually measuring mastery like we've been talking about and reinforcing where necessary. And you can do that through the reports functionality, which you can learn more about right here in this video, specifically about homework. And if you'd like to learn more about hosting games, assigning homework, or some of the other features that we talked about, check out this playlist right here. And we're gonna highlight maybe some other games on screen to give you an idea of what the gameplay might look like. Either way, we'll see you in one of the next videos.